guys, welcome back to part two of Advanced Lessons in Millennial Money, where we answer all your questions about taxes with Robert Kiyosaki and Tom Wheelwright. If you missed part one, you can watch it by clicking the link in the description below. For the rest of us, let's get started. Robert and Tom talk about the three most important terms you should know if you want to understand how taxes can work for you. Let's listen. There are three basic accounting terms you must know and why I do this here. So when I have debt, okay, which is over here, liability, the reason I want a lot of debt is because my hamburger business is paying for my debt. What is that called? It's called amortization. So you're paying down the debt with other money. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So I may, let's say I have $20 million in debt here. Every hamburger that's being sold is paying down my debt. Is that tax-free? That is. It's amortization. But if you're on this side and you have a house, is amortization tax, well, not really, but who pays for that amortization? Well, you pay for it. Yeah, these guys here are they the suckers in this whole deal. I have a big house. That's why most sports stars are bankrupt because they get the $20 million contract and they buy a big house for mommy and daddy, right? That's right. But they don't get this break here. The other word that is important is this word here. And that's called... Yeah, appreciation. Appreciation. So what does that mean to you, Tom? Well, what that means is this is the asset column. It means that as the real estate goes up in value, it's appreciating and you get the benefit. What I love here is where the debt goes, it's the bank's money. That's the bank's money. But you get the appreciation on your money and the bank's money. And that's what's magic to me. Yeah, about so that. let's say uh, I have $1 million of my money in here. By levering up, I got $6 million. Now this thing goes up by s in not multiples of six. Does the bank take any of that money? They get none of it. Debtors are winners, you know. And then we have the third word. So you got amortization, appreciation, and this is the magic word here that most people don't understand. It's depreciation, and this is where it gets tricky. See. Why is that? Can, why can I, Why is it actually both sides? Well, because what happens is, is depreciation is an ex, in a, is a deduction for tax purposes, but it's no money out of your pocket. So because of that, what's really happening is you're lowering your taxes. You're lowering your taxes with the depreciation. Okay, because you pay on net income, right? So you lower your taxes with depreciation, which increases the amount of cash flow. Yeah, let, so let, let me say this much. So let's say I have $100,000 in here that goes to taxes, but because I have depreciation, I don't have to pay the 100,000 in taxes. So that means my income goes up, but it also means my expenses went down. This is number one of all the things that's hard to understand. Is this is simple, everybody knows appreciation. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows amortization. I, I paid my car off. I paid my student loan off. But this here is the trick here. You see, depreciation means you don't, instead of paying 100000 in taxes to the government, I keep the income. That's why it goes up. Let's say that outside of this, let's say you didn't have this, and you have all this income from your business, right, or from this business, either one. Okay. Oh, this person can do it too. If they... Th this person sometimes can do it, okay? Um, but this person can do it, this person. Let's say that you have all this income coming in. You're paying all this tax. Let's say you have $100,000 of tax, okay? Now you go out and buy a piece of real estate. Well, why does the government give you an incentive? Well, because they... Not, not a house, no. Not your, not, not your residence. Not your personal residence. This is investment. So this is housing for other people. Apartment or, houses. Or this is commercial property for an, a business. This is an office okay. building that I own. Exactly. An office building or hotel. Okay. Any kind of business real estate. That's bought with debt too. Now we add the debt. 
So now let's say that we had a million dollars of your own money and $5 million of the bank's money. Well, we get depreciation deduction, a percentage of the $6 million. So the bank doesn't get any of that. We get all of the depreciation of $6 million. That could be as much as $500,000 a year. And because we've got that much depreciation, that's just a reduction of our tax expense. Right, so it's, it's, it's 500,000 extra in income, but it's actually called phantom income. Right, so, so what happens is because we've got, now we have less income for tax purposes, right? No, less, we don't have to pay the... We, we have less income for tax purposes, so now what happens is we have to pay less taxes, okay? Because we're taxed on our net income. We're taxed on our gross income, minus our expense, our business expenses. And in this case, a business expense of depreciation is like magic because it's not money out of our pocket. We're still appreciating, we're still making money here and here and cash flow from the property. Right. Okay, and at the same time, we're reducing our taxes. Well, anytime you can reduce an expense, now I'm an accountant, and so I love reducing expenses. And every time you reduce expense, it's like putting money in your pocket so because what, now you have more that you didn't spend. Right, so this is the same number. So let's say it's 500,000. It means 500,000 in income you didn't have to spend, but it was caused by 500,000 in expenses you didn't have okay. to spend. So you pay nothing for taxes. Oh my gosh, don't worry guys, I'm still here, but that was a really long clip, but very important. Next, we discuss the most important lesson of all, and that's financial education. Then Tom and Robert wrap up our discussion on taxes and where you get the most benefit. For example, a lot of millennials, the first thing that they would do when they get a check is go spend it. And I think that is the well, big difference. Their parents difference. do the same thing. Yes, because they didn't get the financial education. No. But then I, I see you. I bet your you, accountant teacher does the same yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And then I see people like you that the moment, I mean, like you said, it's like, what do I do with all this money? I have to find the next investment. Right. And it's just, it's, that's a really impactful lesson. It's not spending it, it's investing it again. So as this goes up, I've got to borrow more of this so I can buy another asset here so I can get more depreciation. This way, more amortization and more appreciation. And I just get richer and richer and richer. Is this legal, Tom? It's legal, and you know, I was just thinking as you were talking about this that you know, depreciation, sometimes it's, it's got a cost recovery or has other terms in different countries, right. okay? And sometimes, and the, and the rates are different and how much the depreciation is. But the, the concept is very consistent from country to country. It's one of the first things I look for when we go to a new country is, how does depreciation work in that country? Sometimes it works only on new property. Sometimes it works on used property. You know, sometimes you have to build it yourself. So whatever it is, the tax laws are there Here's what's going on. We talk about this all the time. The government's your partner. Yeah. Well, if you're an employee, the government's taking 40% of your money. They're your partner, they're a silent partner, and they're giving you nothing back for that, okay? If you're a small business, they're taking 60% of it. But what happens is, is that if you start doing what the government wants you to do, big business, investor, investing in energy, and and real estate, real food, estate food, water, food, water, all those things. You start doing research, okay? You start doing things the government wants, they'll say, look, we know that that's risky. As your partner, we will contribute to that cost. And that's really all depreciation is. Depreciation is just a, the government's contribution, okay, to your real estate investment. That's all it is. Yeah, and then kind of the cliche term is between Tom and I says, I want more phantom income. Phantom income means money that stays in my pocket or doesn't go out of my pocket. It's the same money. Right, and you make a good point that if, if you're buying your own house, for example, you're not gonna get that tax benefit. There no. are some countries that have small tax benefits for your own house. What they really want is for you to build housing for other people, okay? Then you're being generous and then you get the tax benefit. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this video and I hope you guys loved it just as much as I did. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel. Ciao, nos vemos pronto. Oh my gosh, I almost fell asleep, but that was a very long clip. <laughs>
Oh my gosh, I'm so awake. That was a really... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode. I spit. <laughs> <laughs> the most important lesson of all. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs>